It's Jupiter at night. It's Jupiter at night. Presented live on the internet. It's Jupiter at night. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name, My is, name Chris. is Jeremy. Hey there, J Man. How come you're on Skype I got tonight? Snowed in. I, you sure I did. Out of my house. Dumped on us. <laughs> no, it's pretty nuts. Now that's not all that bad, considering what we're going to be talking about tonight. I feel very and fortunate that is, to be stuck in my home. I, the snow is yeah, exactly. <laughs> the snow is the least of our of, of the way things could be. And and we're referring to the uh, earthquakes in New Zealand. And we thought we'd chat and have a conversation a little bit about the science and t and and the geeky side of what's going on over right. there. Cuz let's face it, we're uh, not exactly the best news source to cover all the hard-hitting facts no. of this sort of thing. No. Though we have been told on a lot of occasions that a lot of you get your news from the show. So we're trying to keep that in mind sometimes when we look at some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But we know that it's, it's there's plenty of places to catch this coverage, so we're just going to cut touch on some of the areas that we kind of find interesting. Well, I'll be honest, if I uh, ever went back to college, like, you know, actually got the money and time and, and motivation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would probably go for a, a degree in geology. So this kind of stuff, this earthquakes and really? tectonics and all that stuff, it really interests me on a kind of a, a yeah, a level that it, most of you now, probably I've know. always found it interesting, but I had no idea. No, I had no freaking idea that you found it that interesting. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, um, so let's just, before we get into the science side of it, let's do a quick recap of what's been going on. Um, now, uh, J-Man, you've done some of the uh, initial digging into this. Do you want to sort of start some of the highlights that we yeah, want to Yeah, well, cover? I think the, the most basic part is, just so you know what we're talking about, if you've been living under a rock or something, <laughs> uh, just yesterday, which I guess was actually the day before yesterday because of our time zone, uh, Christchurch, yeah, yeah. New Zealand, was hit by a 6.3 uh, magnitude earthquake, like right in yeah. the center of their city and very shallow. And that's actually the reason, yeah. you know, Christchurch actually suffered a 7.1 back in September, I think it was. And yeah, yeah. didn't do a damn thing. They didn't. Well, they've pretty, that whole, that whole area is pretty frequent with earthquakes. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's why when I first heard this story, I thought, oh, well, that's kind of, that's kind of uh, the, the, the norm over there. But the big differentiator in, in this case is that uh, the earthquake struck on a fault line that they actually didn't even know existed they until the earthquake actually struck. Recently or they, they, they just recently yeah, discovered it. they recently it. discovered a fault line that was outside the city, like several, I don't know, they're using kilometers, so I don't know, it could have been two feet. What the hell do I know? Metrics confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like way outside hard, the yeah. city, and now they've discovered, basically because of this massive earthquake, that it's much closer to the city, actually runs through the city. Um, yeah. So uh, it's... It hit them pretty hard. Yeah. Well, and like that's I said, a bummer, you know, we, they, ha we have they hit with a 7.1 back in September, but it was like way it was like 40 miles I think outside the city and just that deep as yeah. well. And this one was like right in the heart of the city and half as deep. It's really yeah. interesting so to, to me that you can have a weaker quake closer to the surface and it's just immensely more devastating. You know what's pretty nuts, dude, is the whole area, like I was saying earlier, is a ton of quakes. The actual official number here, that, that area since, two, since, since September 2010 has had 1,582 earthquakes. Yeah. If you click on that link that I, mean, I put in the show notes, too, this is actually a, a Google Maps powered uh, time lapse showing all of those earthquakes. And you can set it up to show every earthquake that they've had or just set it to 3.0 or whatever. I think the actual number of any earthquake they've had recorded in the region is like 5,001 over five months. They've had 5,000 yeah. earthquakes. What? Yeah. <laughs> Move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty intense, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the earthquakes go off now on on that link that you have in the show notes. And uh, you just watch the list on the side of the screen just scroll like and crazy like as, as these little dots go off. Watching on the map. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild, it's man. Uh, so you got to go out to these guys, and uh, your heart's got to go out to them because I know we have got um, we have got viewers in the area, and uh, mm -hmm. I hope that I hope that anyone that listens to our networks, I hope them and their and their families are safe. Uh, before we before we move on to the from the core earthquake, though, I want to touch on the fact of something kind of cool that Google's taken to doing recently. Um, they did it, I think, starting uh, a couple of years ago. Do you remember? I this it was is uh, the first their, their people finder so. project. 
Oh, it's really cool. It's 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 kind of been an unofficial official thing that Google does, and it's it's a way to sort of help aggregate information so people who are either lost or mm-hmm. or not lost, people are looking for somebody that's it's lost like, or I, people that I want to put information to draw out a there. Comparison to it because I know how much you disliked it, but in Battlestar Galactica, you know, right after the the event, they had that <laughs> those bulletin boards of pictures that people they were looking for people or things like that. Yeah, it's kind of that yeah, same yeah, sort of yeah. a thing. It's a it's a virtual bulletin board where you can post that, hey, I'm all right, but I can't call out because the phone lines are damaged or, or overwhelmed and all that kind yep. of stuff. So, you know, you can get information about someone you're looking for. You can provide information. Mm-hmm. But uh, why don't we talk a little bit about some of the geekier side of what's going Let's on here. Let's do that, and Chris. Kind of talk about, uh, specifically, you, you mentioned that this has been an interest of yours for a while. What yeah. specifically kind of, you know, sparks your interest? Well, the whole idea that... Uh, uh, Okay, I'm, this might actually get me flamed a little bit on the internet, but I don't entirely buy into the Pangea uh, theory. You know, the, the idea that all of the Earth was at one time a supercontinent. Really? And that's what we're taught. Really? You don't that's buy That's what it? we're taught. You don't buy it? That's what we're taught in the world. But there's an alternative it theory. It seems to make sense, though. Everything looks it like does. Lego pieces that would and click together. There are several other theories that support it, uh, and I won't deny that. I It just... It's such a new science. Once I basically learned that it was that plate tectonics are a pretty new science, I started to look into what they haven't discovered yet. And that's why I've started to have my doubts about this because there is an alternative theory that I've linked in our show notes called the growing earth theory, where basically that the the whole earth was covered in what other people would call Pangea, was just the entire earth. And then as it over time, over millions of years, it's grown and the oceans have just been uh, basically filled in from the cracks that grew as the surface grew apart from one another. Uh, skeptical Chris is skeptical that, on that, that one. But that's a, has I've never just heard as many, that before. Not more flaws in it than the plate tectonics, but just the fact that there are two separate sets of theories that both pretty much work. That's what I find interesting because it means that there is more to discover over time. You know what I mean? Like nobody really so knows exactly me... what's going on. So what you're saying is the Earth is packing on the pounds. Yeah. That's is that what, you're what saying? this Earth's other theory fat? has. That's, I'm not saying that I 100% buy into either of these. Um, I'm actually, yeah. I still lean so we're, towards we're not calling this. Uh, we're not calling this like uh, uh, TFSM is calling us out in the chat room saying that we're doing shoddy science. Or we're not saying this is our science. No. We're just letting you know that this is what some people no, believe. No, and I guess I, I kind of prefaced that wrong. I actually still more lean towards the Pangea theory and everything that still makes more sense than this other theory. Yeah. I'm just pointing out that there are other things that could be going on here. And I, from, I personally am glad you did. I have never heard that before. And I find that fascinating. Yeah. From just the concept just from is an overall science point of view. We don't know everything there is to know about this planet that we live on. That's the part that I find oh, I do. fascinating. It's, I just have to go to Wikipedia. And uh, so I don't bother. <laughs> I just figure Google or Wikipedia has right. got it. Uh, now, the thing that I find, I the thing I find about the whole plate tectonics theory, ex, which is extremely mm-hmm. fascinating, is the idea that I'm actually sitting on a piece of rock that could potentially be moving right yeah, now underneath and, me. You know, billions, um, and billions I, of I years found from that now could actually have fallen back into the the crust, the mantle of the planet. Yeah, and I found that you know since I've since I learned that as a little grade a little grade boy. But if, if Pangea is thrown into question, does that mean the plate tectonics? No, it's just uh, the theory? difference in the expanding Earth thing just means it's subduction, which the term you might heard of when, when one plate slides under another. In this other yeah, expanding yeah. Earth thing, subduction doesn't it, exist. So there's more space on the planet over time. I don't know. Like I said, it's got its flaws as well. It's just interesting to think about another alternative. Plus... Uh, another additional thing that throws the expanding Earth thing um, kind of for a loop is that they've recently discovered that, I don't know if discovered is the right word for it, but they've recently uncovered, I guess, that uh, Mars has had plate tectonic activity as well in the past. I heard about that, yeah. Specifically, um, uh, right around Olympus Mons, you know, that gigantic, huge, ungodly sized uh, volcano on Mars? Yes, yeah. The areas around it have... Basically, they indicate that the, that the plates right around it and that Olympus Mons might sit on the edge on a fault line, which makes sense because that's where volcanoes well, sit. See, that's, that, that's, where, that's where I think, don't you, don't you essentially have to have plate tectonics in order to make the way volcanoes would properly get their you know, pressure to blow? Uh, probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Not like we're uh, geologists no, or anything no, like that. Right, but. exactly. 
It's yeah. it's really yeah, fascinating. And actually, I've got links in the show notes for, you know, if you don't know much about plate tectonics, you can learn all about what they know so far, or think they know. And there's the growing earth thing, like I said. It's just, it's fascinating yeah. to think about, like, when you look at a hillside and you see the different layers of, of earth, of rock, you're looking back in time. That's kind of the yeah. thing that really fascinates me about the Absolutely. way the planet works is that you you can see the effects of of geological time on this massive millions of years scale that we as humans don't actually get to experience ever. So you know what you know what there's an article that uh, we'll link to where they talk about you know being able to d- to detect uh, to set up an early warning system mm-hmm. or something like that to to try to help. Uh, you know, per- to warn people about what's going to happen. And well, these, uh, these French scientists are saying that preceding almost every major quake in history has been a series of specific types of um, pressure waves. Uh, they call them foreshocks, but they don't actually act the same as earthquakes or aftershocks or anything like that. But, hmm. So these French scientists are trying to set up an early warning system. It wouldn't be like a prediction system for earthquakes, but it might See, give you a half an hour warning before a big one hits. Now, they're doing this based on theoretical models where they predict that the crust is unstable in the hours leading up to a major earthquake. Right, exactly. And that if they can detect that instability, then they would be able to have a warning system. But Mm -hmm. that little part has been their challenge so far is in the real world, they haven't been able to fully detect that instability because you can't have all of – you can't monitor everywhere at once. So you kind of have to figure out where to focus but that's part of the problem, right? Right. It's, if they could, if they could answer that, then they'd have the other problem problem solved. But if it's they interesting knew everything work they're doing. If they to know about the planet, it would be no problem, right? Yeah. Just yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but they have, uh, they have, they have uh, some documented cases of these uh, foreshocks that yeah. uh, they've been able to. Uh, just, and and sometimes they were only. Did you see that sometimes they're only twenty minutes before the event? I mean, so you're not talking like a huge warning system. No, and that's what I was. But they were able. It's not really a prediction system. It's just like maybe uh, a yeah. oh shit brace. Sound the alarm. Yeah, yeah. brace for yeah. impact. But but they've been able to go back to these these five separate cases, and uh, you know they've been able to identify in each case these these early warnings. Mm-hmm. So that's encouraging. Well, and if you, you know, think that's about a good start. if these folks in New Zealand would have had an early warning that they're sitting on an active fault about to blow. Might we have been able to avoid the fact that there was, there's been like, I think, more than 60 people confirmed dead from that? You got to think. You know, what's funny is uh, we live on a very well-known fault ourselves. Yeah, we so do. So we sit in here having this, that's, you know, that's also, you know, you look at things like this, that's the situation that they're in, just to, you know, bring it back home to us, is, is technically the situation you and I are in right mm-hmm. now. I mean, we'd be so not screwed. Not only for earthquakes because of the region that we live in but there's also like three or four maybe five active volcanoes within danger range if they blew no we've had mount we've had mount st helens go off back in 1981 mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. pretty epic um so oh speaking yeah, of Rainier. volcanoes you know did you i was just reading this like last week or something but mount fuji in the center of japan is apparently bust into blow at any second now so if these earthquakes oh. in the south uh, pacific keep going off there's no telling that might potentially lead to disaster in, right up there in Japan. Wow. Yeah. Because it's all, it's all one now. planet. <laughs> now you're freaking me out, dude. Well, let's don't, take don't it do a that step further then, because there are many 2012 uh, conspiracy theorists saying that the ring of fire is yeah. going to just bust half of the planet off into space, and that's going to be our apocalypse. <laughs> Yeah, they were theorizing in the chat room earlier that if it's not the the light hydrant collider like a Peregrine Falcon mentions, mm-hmm. it might be yeah something in 2012. Uh, Andrea in the chat room is hoping that maybe 2012 results in California falling off the country. And I don't know what that's about. That's some sort of judgy hostility there. But they got a bunch of different theories in there. They must be. You don't know what's going to happen in American 2012. Idol on it could the other be television because that would that would motivate me to want California to break off. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right, J Man. Well, I think that just I think that just about wraps up tonight's very scary and doom and gloomy episode. But you know, actually, uh there is some positive things in there. I think Google's work is very cool. I think maybe the early detection system that those French scientists are working on mm-hmm. could eventually prove to be um a lifesaver, we can hope. Quite literally. And uh, yeah. and, and and our thoughts are with the folks that are in the reach of our voices that are in that area. Mm-hmm. Um we hope the best for all of you out there. So, uh, all right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in tonight's episode. Now, uh, snow snow permitting, we'll have another episode 
tomorrow night. And uh, it's Thursday night. That means it's going to be our last episode of the week. Wait a minute. So we're going to pick already? a topic. I know. Can you believe Lord. how fast this week's gone, dude? That's wrong. I know. That's just wrong. Okay. It's, it's, I didn't mean you know what else it is? It's, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I was thinking about that before we started the show about how fast this week's moved along. Mm-hmm. Because also this week is Lotso on Friday night. Now, like I was just saying, Jupiter at Night, our last episode of the week is Thursdays. But uh, every other week over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live, or we got our new domain, jvlive.tv. We do Legend of the Stoned Owl, and that's our video gaming show. And so you can tune in Friday night and catch that if you want to get your video gaming on with us. And uh, we've been kicking around the idea, dude, of doing a live uh, Champions Online gameplay event with folks on the live stream. And you know that's free to play now. So yep. if you, I'm letting you know now on Wednesday, if you want to go download Champions, if you haven't got it yet, then you can join the Lotso crew. We'll probably be shooting some footage for the show. Uh, that'll be Friday night, probably starting around 8 p.m. Pacific, our time. So might as well give a plug in for that to give you a little bit of time to download because it's kind of a big download. How, it's like it's like three gigs now, right? It's getting pretty I, big I, or one point six. It's big. It's taken some yeah, people twenty four hours or so to download it, depending on Holy the smokes. on the server loads and everything at that time. Yeah, so you can go to Champions, or Google Champions Online to to find that. I think it's like Champions Dash Online or something. So you can grab that. <laughs> okay, everyone. Well, that wraps up tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night. If you're on the live stream, stick around for the faux show, our live stream exclusive show that happens every Wednesday night after Jupiter Night. And uh, that stars my very own wife. Isn't that adorable? It is. And you can catch that right after this very program on the live stream. But until tomorrow night, everyone, have a great evening.